All right, it's time to put our doll together. So I have varnished the lips and the eyes, and you can use flectoverethane or just a clear gloss glaze, just something that you know is safe for polymer clay. And then after that's dried, I'm gonna be putting uh, some batting on the back of her head. You could use a foam ball or just whatever you have handy. I have quilt batting around, so I'm gonna take a ball of it and then take another piece of it. So it's kind of enclosing the first little ball and then I'm gonna glue it onto her head like that. So she's got more of a head there. You could use any kind of glue that you like, but this is my favorite for adhering material or hair to polymer clay. So that's what I've got now, just kind of a rough head shape. And then I have some cheesecloth that I dyed with some writ dye, and look at this. Doesn't she look like the witch from uh, Snow White? <laughs> she needs an apple, right? <laughs> then here I've got her hands all painted, ready to be put in place. And I'm going to be wrapping this wire around the wooden stick, like so. And then just wrap that around a lot so I've got these hands to be able to pose where I want them to be. And then to have the arms be soft, you can take some quilt batting and I just have a strip of it and then just wrap it around and I'll just adhere mine with glue on one end and then just keep on wrapping and then if you want a skinny arm you can leave it like that or you can put another layer on and I'm just going to go up probably about to here since the rest of the wire will be wrapped around the wooden spoon. Alright so that's how I did the arms so they're attached there and now you can just Use hot glue to glue this in place, or I'm going to use some epoxy sculpt or magic sculpt epoxy putty to put over this so they'll stay very reinforced. And then you just repeat for the legs. And you can give her shoes or bare feet or whatever you want to do, but just do the same thing down here with her legs. So here she is, just kind of wrapped up in my cheesecloth material for a minute here just so I can kind of get a feel for her. Her hands are quite large, <laughs> but she's cute. I think she's funny. So this is what she looks like underneath. I just let the um, Magic Sculpt dry overnight. So it's hard as a rock now, and so she, her hands are attached really well. She's got a little funky looking body right now. I haven't sculpted her feet yet, and so I just made wires like this since I had the epoxy sculpt ready to go and I could get those wires attached and so now I'm going to actually use some of the steel wire that's much more sturdy than um, this thick armature wire that I have and I will sculpt the feet onto that and then kind of just wrap the two wires together and then attach it at the top again with a bit more epoxy sculpt so it's completely attached. So for the leg wires, I'm using the steel wire that's 16 gauge, and I also happen to have some copper wire that I'm just using too, but if you don't have that, you could just use two pieces of the steel wire. And this makes it just very sturdy, and I'm going to wrap these two together with some paper tape. I also put some of the aluminum foil tape on the ends of both of these, so it would be very secure. Now I'm just going to continue wrapping it, but that's what it looks like wrapped. For the feet, I'm just making a rough foot shape out of some aluminum foil, and I've made these the same length as the hands, and then I'll be adding toes to this too, so they'll be longer than the hands. And I'm just going to wrap this with some aluminum foil tape, and then tape it to a leg stick, and then wrap the whole thing in paper tape as well. Here's how it looks with the foil tape on it, and then I'll just wrap it with the paper tape. All right, so here's the legs with the feet. Now I'll just cover these with clay and sculpt in some toes. So I've just layered clay all around it. Now I'm going to smooth this out and then make toes. So here's how my foot looks just after it's baked and I just wanted to point out some of the landmarks for you. Um, I use the rubber tip tool or my little gray silicone tool like this this tool is actually great for it, to kind of make these bones show up in the toes. And then I make sure to have um, this part of the foot curve out here. And then 
arching in right here just a little bit. I mean, these are kind of old flat feet. I've got ankle bone higher on the inside, lower on the outside, and then the whole foot is narrower down here and widens out for the toes. So I do that and then I add the toenails. This is the other foot. See the toenails make a big difference and these are not baked toenails yet. I'll need to do that next. And then give her feet some color. But I just tried to get them to look as close as I could to each other and they're slightly different but that's okay. So here's how they look after I've given them some color just like I did to the hands. And now I'm going to heat set them in the oven for 15 minutes so those nails are fully baked too, and then paint the nails and then we'll assemble our doll. Here's painted nails versus before the nails are painted. Aren't they cute when they're painted like that? <laughs> okay, so she, my husband says she keeps looking like an old man. <laughs> But, so I've got the legs attached. I just wrapped the wires that were attached to her around these sturdy wires that I had made the feet on. And I'm just kind of wrapping them around and back and then I'm gonna be trimming these and then adding another layer of the Magic Sculpt. So it's gonna hold all this in really nice and tight. And I've made sure that she will stand. And she does, she's pretty cute. Kind of scary right now with just her skeleton.